same, uh, you can use the thrusters on the limb to start this motion. That's really a coasting motion. Uh, we haven't we haven't done that one either, by the way, Leo, uh, in the simulation I recall. We've used the uh, command service module combination to set this up. Yeah, so that's one of the problems that uh, Jim Lovell was reporting on, is that when he was trying to use the reaction control systems of the lunar module to uh, fly, the, to whole fly the vehicle, he was getting some cross-coupling because the center of mass is offset from here. What do you mean by cross-coupling, Lou? Well, when he would go to put in a, a pitch maneuver or a roll maneuver, he would couple into a yaw at the same time because uh, the engines are designed to operate this vehicle here with the center of mass associated with no. these rockets. Now, when you're trying to fire these engines to control this whole mass, your, your, your center of gravity is offset, so you don't get a pure control movement when you fire a, a jet. Well, that's very interesting because what they're talking about, uh, they, they mentioned there, was yes. jettisoning jettisoning the mm -hmm. service module, which isn't doing them any good at the moment, apparently. Intuitively, um, I like that idea, but uh, we, we, haven't, we haven't simulated this configuration. But uh, now you've removed this large mass. Uh, it appears it's not usable. It's just along for the ride. It does two things for you. It gives you less uh, total system to accelerate with this descent propulsion system, which is the engine we'll use in the back of the moon as you heard Sig Schober describing it. Uh, the other thing is that uh, these thrusters that you see in these areas that do uh, uh, give an attitude change don't have as much cross-coupling as Leo said. Then you have to drive uh, this thrusters long to make this whole stack move. Mm -hmm. You just move, uh, you're basically moving the limb and this little bit of an ice cream cone is going along with you, which is all you need to come home. But there's no reason to throw this away until that decision is made that this is no longer usable. Well, this possibility was discussed, but uh, as it was pointed out, we have done descent propulsion engine burns in a dock configuration. Jim McDivitt did this on Apollo 9, as a matter mm -hmm. of fact. But there has been no flight testing done uh, with the descent engine firing with the service module separated. So I imagine the NASA uh, people are looking into this very closely. And as, as I mentioned in the press conference, they're busy right now doing some simulations and uh, I'm sure that these people will rapidly get on top of this problem and come up with some good configuration changes and some procedures for these people. Leo, you didn't look too happy as Wally was describing that. Uh, do you yourself have some doubts about it or as a test engineer would you not like to try it uh, without uh, in-flight testing first? Well, I think we always like to have in-flight testing to verify it, but sometimes it's not feasible to do this. But uh, I'm sure that the NASA people back at Houston are looking into this right now, and uh, they probably will verify on their simulations and uh, make an analytical examination of this possibility. Let's see if I have more technical questions for you, uh, Leo, going back through the, uh, the notes that I made during the uh, recent news conference. Uh, well, I don't think I have. It's, uh, you know, they've talked about having no problem separating. I guess that's perfectly clear. What the what, what needs to be done. They have to, uh, each of these stages has to be jettisoned uh, before they can finally re-enter. Only that little command module uh, finally gets, can, can come back in. If anything else is attached on there, the dynamics, uh, thermal dynamics are all wrong uh, and it, it just won't work. Uh, it literally would burn up uh, in space. There's a heat shield to build onto that command module on the flat side of it to, to get the uh, the men back safely, and uh, there's no other way to do it. Well, there are to be free. There are some gee whiz things that could be discussed. The uh, typical separation routine uh, requires the thrusters on the service module, for example, to draw it away from the command module. Although this just adds uh, safety to the separation maneuver. In the same light, the limb, when it's separated from the command service module, is literally flown away, accelerated away. So the two is on a separate flight path. So these kind of what if or gee whiz statements will uh, cause a little bit of midnight oil burning. Of course, we're burning some ourselves at Mission Control Center, but they're all within uh, the capability of what we have here. So I'm not really worried about it, just in case of consideration is required. Now, they're, they're talking about right now, uh, uh, Jim Lovell and Fred Hayes are in the lunar module. Uh, and Jack Swigert is in the command module. And uh, it was suggested by McDivitt that, uh, I think maybe
heavy craft that they would probably, uh, two of them would probably stay in the command module or sleep in the command module with one remaining on duty in the lunar module. Uh, it would be their configuration for living for the next four days. I think Chris was making a, a guess and he made that point clear himself. Uh, one thing for sure I'll say, if I were in command of the mission at this point, there would be one man awake all the time. Uh, this is what we call an emergency mode, and it's like general quarters or battle stations. You can't afford to let this run on its own anymore, as we had developed it uh, in the last few missions, where all three crewmen slept simultaneously. In this case, one will have to be on watch. Now, where the watch station is, obviously, the only thing that's working is the limb, so the command module might be the sleep house. Yeah. I'm sure they won't all be yeah. sleeping at the same time. No, I'm sure they're all three going to have trouble getting to sleep at this point. Gentlemen, we're going to pause now. Five seconds for station identification. WDBO Television, Channel 6, Orlando. Let us review for you quickly now what has transpired this evening. The flight of Apollo 13, man's fifth trip to the moon and his, what was to have been his third landing attempt, was going splendidly tonight. Well, just about 10 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, four hours and 17 minutes ago, and it seems like a, the longest four hours and 17 minutes that we've had around here in some time. Must have felt the same way in Houston, up there in the command ship. But at that time, around 10 o'clock Eastern Standard Time tonight, something happened aboard the Apollo 13. It is not known yet uh, just what happened. Perhaps it was hit by a meteoroid. Perhaps there was an explosion. At any rate, the electrical power supply for the command module, service module, and for the mission, indeed, uh, went out. Uh, that uh, electrical supply is furnished by the three fuel cells, so-called. Liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen uh, are combined, and they, uh, that chemical combination supplies electricity. Byproduct is water. Uh, this is the main supply system for the mission. There are alternate supplies of electricity through batteries. Well, this system was hit. It went out with a bang, an explosion, a venting of oxygen from the spacecraft itself. Just suddenly, the men found themselves without power, almost as if their, the fuse had blown. Indeed, that's just the way they reported it. Uh, the first, uh, the one and three fuel cells went out. The third fuel cell, number two, began draining very rapidly. Uh, they took emergency action, shut down all the electrical power they could to conserve what electricity they could, and then it was decided that uh, clearly they could not land on the moon and uh, mission control and the men in the spaceship began considering instead how they could uh, be sure to get back safely from their mission without landing on the moon it was decided that the way to do that and indeed it's written in the flight plan would be to use the descent engine propulsion system because they are still joined uh, to the lunar module so the descent engine of the lunar module operating on its own battery power supply independent of the fuel cells will be used to provide a enough boost to swing the command ship uh, and the lunar modules connected to it around the moon and back on a trajectory toward Earth. This all now means no moon landing, but would mean a safe return on Friday uh, in the Pacific Ocean. It is believed they have enough uh, oxygen aboard, enough uh, water, they of course have the food aboard, uh, and uh, enough power to do all of the necessary maneuvers for that successful landing in the Pacific on Friday around 12.13 uh, p.m. Eastern Standard Time is the calculation now. If it should turn out that they begin to run short of some of those consumables that they find so uh, essential to life indeed, they would come back in the Atlantic, and that can be done getting them down about, oh, nine hours earlier uh, than otherwise. They could land in the Atlantic, although that is a contingency landing area, not a prime one. The ship waiting for them, the Iwo Jima, is out in the Pacific. There are no ships in the, in the Atlantic, uh, but uh, the Coast Guard is working on getting something down there now and is surveying the available uh, uh, surface craft to see what can be done. The situation is certainly critical. It's been called as serious a one as we've ever had in space, but uh, the officials at Houston say their chances are excellent of getting back safely, and the situation is safe at the moment. 
The next critical time will come if all continues to go well now. No other major malfunctions. Uh, tomorrow night around 9.30 at PM when they fire that descent propulsion system engine uh, to put them in a proper trajectory to come back to Earth.